Yeah, so thanks for joining me anyway. Um, I think I filled out your uh, form and I said on there that like I'm, I don't know whether it's flat, whether it's not. Well, that's the best thing um, you can possibly say. That's the best, that's the yeah. best answer. So, so I've wanted to get someone on to talk about this for a while. Um, and I've seen obviously you on YouTube and everything. And I've listened, I listened to a debate you did actually today with Professor Dave. See, that's because YouTube really... fed you that. That's horrible. I mean, it's hard. No, that, that, that was on Spotify, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. I've seen, well, like, although I had seen a clip of it on no, uh, YouTube, course. so I listened to that. You know, I've done, I was I've done really 1,199 that, other interviews. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't particularly, he put me off his attitude. Very good. His That's attitude, good. I just like, I didn't like it at all. Nobody so, likes it. <laughs> you know, so anyway. Well, he's, yeah, a so he's a deceiver and he's not out to learn the truth. He's out for uh, views and payment by Google. So um, I'm looking for anything you want to discuss today. It'll be awesome. Yeah. So I would say that probably a lot of my audience, well, I say a lot. I would say a good portion of them are Christians because I am. Some will probably already believe Flat Earth. Some won't. Um, some will be halfway like me. I've got some people that I know who listen to this who were sort of very intrigued by it, like I am. Um, so, yeah. So, basically, I mean, in terms of the biblical side of things, I'll probably I'll probably just have a little talk about that towards Christians for a couple of minutes, and then we'll get into, like, the science of things, because that's your area. You, you've done that for a number of years. That's not my area. We'll um, uh, we'll and... cover we'll cover both of those and we'll get into the basics the God given yeah, common sense. Yeah, yeah. This is all yeah. about you know who we are and our ability to use our God given common sense. David Weiss, aka Flat Earth Dave, welcome to be on the Paradigm for the first time. Hey, thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to this conversation. One of my favorite things. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said to you, we were just talking a little bit there. I've listened to some of the stuff, you know, some of your interviews you've done. But just for people who possibly may not know who you are and have not looked into Flat Earth previously, can you just tell us a little bit about your background and then what led you to actually do what you're doing now? You know, I always questioned things growing up. I questioned all religions. I, I, uh, you know, just looked into things like, you know, things aren't right with the world. And uh, most of my life, I just was a normal person. And um, then I started a podcast uh, a long time ago called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, looking into some of the deceptions. It all started with the Federal Reserve. What, what's the Federal Reserve? What's the IRS? What is money? That's where it all started from. And then, you know, jumping way forward, 9-11 happened and other false flags and other hoaxes. And so we did this podcast called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. And in the third year, people started sending me flat earth stuff. And I was like, that's too far. I'm sorry. I'm, you know, hey, you want to blow up a marathon? You want to have a fake shooting, a fake airplane crash? I'm happy to talk about that. But flat earth is one step too far. And uh, I kept banning people from our social media for even suggesting that I watch a one minute video. And then finally, somebody who I trust very much uh, said, Dave, you have to look into Flat Earth and sent me a couple of videos. And I said, OK, I'm going to look at these. And I'm just going to debunk Flat Earth and prove the globe and be on with this. You know, just be done with this. Right. And I watched the videos and I'm like, huh. And it got me thinking and it got me thinking. And uh, and and then I realized, wow, you know, after two weeks of looking for proofs, um, um, and I went, by the way, I went in with a closed mind. I went in with disprove flat earth, prove the globe and be done with this. That's not what a real curious person should do. It's to say, looking for the truth, show me the evidence. But I went in biased and I came out the other side. We live on a stationary level, topographical, non-rotating plane. There is no debate. It's just how much information can you hide from people how much can you brainwash them? How much can you scare them? How much can you censor them? The censorship on uh, on flat Earth is ridiculous, and um, you know nobody leaves flat Earth. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. But the 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 trick that they have is making you not see it. You know when you um 
when you Google flat earth, you just, you get a, you get, you get like the, a disc floating in space, right? You know, mm. what is flat earth? This is flat earth. This is a balloon at 127,000 feet, right? But if you Google flat earth, you get this, this is from the flat earth society, right? And uh, that flat earth society is government controlled. I'm convinced because Obama mentioned it a half a dozen times in his speeches and it's filled with nonsense. No flat earther believes this, but here's the thing. Globe believers think this is flat earth and they also don't know their own model, right? They mm -hmm. don't know their own model at all. So that's where, you know, uh, I, I know all of the basic arguments. They're gonna say, oh, what is earth? The only, uh, only flat disc and all the other planets are pancake. We're the only pancake, right? You know what this is? This is called a false, a false dichotomy, right? You have a fake flat earth model with a fake heliocentric model mixed together. So you have fake and fake. There's nothing true in here. None of this is true. And so that's where people are arguing from a point of complete and total ignorance. And by the way, when I say someone's ignorant, it's not an insult. Everyone is ignorant to anything they don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm ignorant to everything I don't know. So are you, so is everybody else. I was ignorant to what I thought I knew. Um, but then, uh, you know, then when you, uh, when you finally understand what flat earth is and you see other ideas that, that could explain what it is, then you have to start thinking. And here's the thing, flat earthers admit, and I'll, then I'll throw it back to you, that we don't know. We don't know a lot of things. There's a lot of stuff that is unknown. What is a star? You know that astronomers, professional and amateur, have never seen a star as anything other than a pinpoint of light in the sky. That's all you can say. It's a pinpoint of light in the sky. They want you to believe that there's gas balls in a space vacuum with planets going around them. That, that everything about that sentence was wrong. I mean, gas in a vacuum collapsing instead of expanding. I mean, when you take the time to break your programming to the stuff that they told you before you were able to think that you have set as your foundation, and then you think about it logically with your God-given common sense, um, then, then you'll start to see, then you'll start to see. One last note is my entire life, I was not really religious. I, I checked out different religions and um, I discounted all religions based on my first Bible study I went to. I went on a kid's young life trip to Bermuda, right? I was born into a Jewish family, non-practicing, knew nothing about religion, never went to temple really. And, uh, and everyone's going on this trip to Bermuda with this young Christians association. I was, and my mom's like, just go, go. I was like, okay. And so we go there and the first day they take us out on the stuff and they're, they're going to do a little Bible reading. And I'm like, oh boy, you know, oh boy. Right. And uh, the verse that he read was the stars fell to the earth. I'm like, Bible's complete nonsense. Stars are, you know, if a house was a star, the earth is a grain of sand. How does that, how does that happen? And I discounted religion all religions based on that one thing for my entire life until eight, eight years ago, maybe 10 years ago. So wow. there you go. There's a lot. Yeah, I mean, like, like you said, then, you know, you can't come to these things with bias and I'm, I'm sort of in a little process of like deprogramming myself at the moment. Um, you know, I mean, I've been down many rabbit holes over the years. Um, I think it was the UFO phenomena for me, first of all, um, I've been a Christian since 2001. Now, one of the, when I've been listening to some of the podcasts you've done, and also I've heard other um, podcasts regarding Flat Earth, one of the claims that some of these Christians make, and I'm not cri criticizing them as people, is that they say that the Bible teaches Flat Earth. Well, it actually doesn't. It doesn't teach Flat or Globe Earth. It doesn't teach either. And they they use certain verses, like one of them that they tend to use is Revelation chapter 7, verse 1, and where it talks about, uh, John says, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds. Now, in writing this, the apostle John was using idiomatic language. That's what it was. It was an idiom, four corners of the earth, referring to like every distant location on earth. And we use idioms today, for example, um, you know, we'll we'll say because it's the Olympics this year. We'll say like the Olympic athletes have come from the four corners of the earth. Now, no one believes that the Earth's a square, 
because if we literally thought it was a square, it was flat and a square, then that would be literal. Um, and 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 you know the the Bible itself is wrote for a specific purpose, and the purpose isn't to tell us what shape the earth is, but it does teach us that God obviously created all things, and like you mentioned about the stars falling and all that. So it does allow for flat earth. I'm not saying it debunks it or it debunks the globe. What I'm simply saying is that a lot of Christians, they use the Bible in a way that it's not meant to be used. Um, sometimes they quote from the Psalms when it talks about um, when the earth and all its people quake. This is Psalm 75, verse 3. It is I who hold its pillars firm. It doesn't literally mean the earth's on pillars. The Psalms are, po are poems. It's poetical language. It, it basically means that God is like holding the earth in st stability because God is a spirit, yeah, and he's, he's upholding all things. And it's the same regarding the firmament. And they try to say that the firmament means it's this, this dome and everything. Well, actually, in the original language, the word is a, a noun. It's a masculine noun, rakia, which simply means an extended surface or an expanse. Now, um, in a lot of the modern, more modern translations, I mean, I read the King James Version, and it says firmament. But in all the newer versions... It just says heaven or expanse. So that's well, simply what it's talking about. So I think it's important before we go on. I know like the, the, the science part of things for you. And I just wanted Christians to understand that the Bible doesn't teach either. It's not saying that it's flat or it's a globe. It doesn't say either. And that's not the purpose of the Bible anyway. I mean, the point is that whether the earth's flat, whether it's a globe, God created it. That's the point. Now, um, that said, what convinced you? Was there was there a particular argument that you've seen, or was it a, a combination of evidence that convinced you it was flat? Well, let, let's. There, there's a lot to unravel there, and I, I want to. I'm not the mm. Bible expert for sure, um, and I actually will get you somebody else that is a Bible expert to come on your show, and and you can get deeper into this conversation, which will be interesting. Yeah, yeah. But there's there's two two um two things they want you either in a religion or in science. Both of those are religions, okay? Science is a religion, but if you are a Christian, then the Bible is everything. If you are not a Christian, the Bible is nothing, right? So you can't go up to somebody that doesn't believe in God and say, but the Bible says, because then they'll be like, you're crazy. Just get, leave me alone, you crazy nut. But if you say science and actual science, not pseudoscience, not just using the word science or using the word physics, right? But actually doing science, that works for everybody. I can show you that I have a rock here and a rock here, and I put both rocks in one hand. I got two rocks in one hand. Religious science or not, everyone knows that's a fact, okay? Mm. So for me, you know, if you came at me, if somebody came to me at Flat Earth first and saying, oh, yeah, look, it's in the Bible, I would probably have never looked, right? I probably mm. would have never looked. But now, now I say, well, this proves it. And that also is backed up in the Bible. But Christians will lead and say, the Bible says it, and science backs it up. Either way, they're married together. So during our podcast today, we're going to talk. Things go into three baskets. Only works on a flat earth, only works on a globe earth, or works on both. Works on both, right? And you're going to find that nothing goes into that middle basket. Nothing. Nothing, nothing goes into that. And when you go into the Bible, I think that God wants us here where we have to have faith in God. Because if God showed up and said, I'm here, I'm watching over everything, there goes the whole game, right? The whole game is gone and, uh, and, and it's ruined. And there's some verse in the Bible, I should memorize it, but that's just not my style, that says, once you see my creation, you can no longer deny my existence. Once you discover that we don't live on a spinning ball, that the earth is intelligently designed, you have no choice but to deny the creator. In a heliocentric model, you could say there was a big bang. Out of nothing came everything. It's ridiculous. Or God did it. Either way. But on a flat earth, there's only a creator. That's the only choice you have. And if you look, you know, um, I was watching a debate the other day, and the guy said, you know, there's a lot of flat earthers that are atheists. No, there's zero. There's zero flat earthers that don't believe in a creator. Because you can't 
understand that the earth is intelligent, intelligently designed and say there's no creator because that's the definition of intelligently designed, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of things in the Bible that are fascinating. The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. That's interesting. You know, um, the, the first page of the Bible, Genesis, says that uh, God separated the waters from the waters and, uh, and created the, firm, the firmament. Um, mm. And, uh, you know, if you look into Werner von Braun, the head of uh, um, NASA, Nazi scientist brought over, his gravestone also says the Psalms 19.1 on it. And that means the heavens declare the glory of God in the firmament, which you brought up, show it his handiwork. And uh, in the 1959 or 58 uh, Encyclopedia Americana, in the section on Antarctica, it talks about the firmament and the dome uh, in Antarctica at 85 degrees south. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's so many things. You know, the earth is stationary. It shall not be moved. There's like 200 verses in the Bible that suggest a flat earth. The only one in the Bible that suggests a globe earth from a globe earth's point of view is Isaiah talking about the circle of the earth. But if you look up the definition of a circle, a circle is a line on a plane a flat surface where all the points on the line are equidistant from a center point. That's a circle. I can draw a circle mm. on my floor. It doesn't make it a sphere. So it can mean horizon as well. That that actual verse that you quote in there, yeah. it could be translated as horizon. I, so well, it doesn't teach a globe earth. That's what I was saying. It the horizontal teach. eye zone. Poor mm. eye zone. Okay. The horizontal eye zone. So you understand with globe or flat. We can only see a certain distance. Um, where are you? Are you in the United mm. States? No, I'm, I'm in the oh. UK. UK. So in, uh, I went to Las Vegas, and at the Bellagio Hotel, it is so long. You go to one end of the hallway. The other end of the hallway, the ceiling literally touches the floor. I mean, it looks like it touches the floor. Of course it does, and you zoom in, and you can see. But it looks like the lights are touching the rug at the far end of the hallway. That's, what is that? Mm. And not even a tenth of a mile, right? It's nothing, right? Oh, look, my uh, my emojis. I I found out for some reason, like my camera does crazy stuff when I when I make when I make simple. <laughs> Can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. right? Um, that's something new. I don't even know how to turn it off. Um, <laughs> so, so that's called with that that point where you where the sky meets the ground. That's your horizontal eye zone. The horizon. zone. A lot of people say, well, that's not what horizon means. That's what it means to me. So we're going to look into that. I think the horizon is a good one to get into because uh, the number one proof that people have that the earth is a globe is boats over the horizon, can't see the bottoms of buildings, the bottoms of mountains. Um, and uh, what else? What else is there? Um, the movement of the stars going in different directions, seeing different stars. So we'll go anywhere where you want to go. Where do you want to go? Well, let's. Well, well. First of all, what would you say to someone? What about GPS and satellites? So you get people going. Well, you know, we've got satellites and GPS. I mean, just so you know, I don't trust anything NASA says. I don't believe we've been to the moon, and I don't believe there's an international space station. I mean, they're basically flying around on wires. So I'm with you on that because I know that's probably right. What and you and who's as well. in charge of all the satellites? NASA. Do you know that NASA mm -hmm. controls all of the helium in the world? And NASA admits that there's tens of thousands of satellites hanging on balloons, hmm. right? And people think that they're using their cell phones, uh, that they're using satellites. No, they're not. We're connected on an undersea cable, and I don't even know when those were put in there. I think some of them were here hundreds of years ago, okay? But they don't want us to know about our history. When you start looking into our history, that's a rabbit hole that's so deep that you just dive in head first and you'll... Um, you you won't uh, you won't ever um, you won't ever hit the bottom. So this is um, Starlink. Have you seen Starlink cross over your head yet? No, I haven't. So you know what Starlink is, right? The Elon Musk's yeah. little satellites he's yeah. putting up there, right? So yeah. I've seen this with my own eyes. So it's real, right? Mm -hmm. But let's do some logical thinking here. Let's do so. So when you see these, they're real. They look really low, but they're satellites. They're really high. Okay. So let me ask you a question. This is a 747, and this is a 747 at altitude, right? Now, it's picture so small, you really can't even see it. But when you look up at an airplane at altitude, you can see the airplane, right? You can see the wings. You can see the tail, right? Mm -hmm. But can you see the engines? No. 
right. Sometimes, sometimes maybe you could like, oh, I maybe think depend because yeah. I know where they are, right? So hmm. the engines, see what I have here. So that's about seven miles high, seven miles high. That gigantic plane. Now, do you see this guy right here? There's a, there's a man standing right there. Yeah. Right? So you didn't even see him before, right? That's how big this no. airplane is. But at seven miles high, it's tiny. So mm -hmm. a Starlink satellite is about the size of a school desk, a desk. Let's just say a regular, you know, a desk at home. So you can probably fit 10 or 20 of them inside that engine. Mm -hmm. See where I'm going here? Okay. Yeah. So you can't see that engine. But for some crazy reason, we can see these satellites. And guess how high Starlink satellites are? Are they seven miles high? If that airplane was double the height, 14 miles high, could you even see it? You couldn't even see the airplane, right? No. No. Okay? These satellites... These alleged satellites are 350 miles up on the size of a school desk. Now, <laughs> does that tell us what they are? No, it does not. This is some big deception. I don't know mm. if it's just a light show to convince people the earth is a globe, to convince people of all sorts of stuff, right? Um, this is provably, now, uh, again, falsification is independent of replacement. I just proved that these are not school desks at 350 miles up, let alone seven miles up, right? I just proved that. So I don't have to replace it. I think that they're drones. There's something being dragged by another airplane. They're on the bottom of a giant airship that we can't see. Um, and several people have reported when they see it, if they're in a rural area and they see it, they hear a jet fighter way ahead of it and they hear a jet fighter way behind it. To me, mm. I think those are like military planes saying, hey, you know, some Bob in his Cessna, like, hey, what are those lights? I'm going to head over there and they'll stop them. They don't want anybody interfering with this deception. This is a deception. So, but Dave, mm. I have Starlink service. I could be on my boat with Wi-Fi service. How does it work then if they're not real? Well, I have the answer to that. Okay. So th these are supposedly, oh, hold on, this is not what I wanted to show you. I don't think, hold on a second. Uh, uh, uh. All right, so, so these are cell, so cell towers. When you're driving down the road, you're, go, you're, you're relaying from tower to tower to tower, right? You can, I talked on my phone from, you know, for 100 miles. I, I was on the call for 100 miles. I must have gone, how many towers did I go to? I don't know, but I, I transferred from tower to tower without even noticing it, right? So let me ask you a question. If I was, uh, if I was you know, I'm moving along and here's a tower and, and um, jump forward here. So you got tower, 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 whoops. So you got all these towers and they, they form a mesh. Now, if I was stationary and all of those towers were moving, the service would still work the same, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these towers, what do they need? They need to be, they need a lot of electricity. They need to be service. Things go, things break, you know, things that need to be checked on, upgraded, right? So a tower, you can service it and you connect it to power, all good. You put a satellite in space, Falling around the earth that's corkscrewing through space to a, an impossible space vacuum. We'll get into that. And, mm. and how is that, how is that even possible? It's so ridiculous. It's like, I feel stupid even saying it. So how, so the higher a cell tower, the bigger its circle is, right? The higher, so these cell towers, let's say they're all, I don't know, 500 feet, 300 feet, whatever. If I had one up that it was at 3000 feet, one at 3000 feet could probably cover this entire area, right? What about mm. at 10,000 feet? What about at seven miles high? That could cover a pretty big area. What's at seven miles high, has electricity, has able to be serviced, um, are everywhere in the sky, and, um, and, and already have that equipment on them? And the answer is airplanes. Yeah. Air airplanes. So you have your, mm. your satellite phone or your... Uh, your service, it's either going to connect to the closest tower, or if there's no tower, it's going to connect to a plane that's going to relay it to another tower. Hmm. That's it. If they're not doing that, they're being irresponsible because that is the cheapest, best, easiest way to do it. Right? And, and hmm. so 
you know, people, people are like, well, I, I don't believe that there's satellites. There's, there's the Google Loon program. There's, they, they admit this, but they don't tell you about it. These satellites can weigh up to 8,000 pounds. They could stay up there for over a year, maybe even longer. They don't tell us. And so I don't even think that most of the services that we use even use anything in the air. It's all done tower-based. It's all done on the ground. It's all done, you know, the well, the tower, you know, you can't communicate across the ocean because of the curve of the earth. No, they did that. They have, they, they've, they've done microwave transmissions across the oceans. Hmm. And um, all of that is being hidden from us. So there's your satellite answer. And then, you know, these satellites are crashing are all over the earth. There's, there's, um, well, that's the one I want. Satellites are crashing all over the earth. And one thing they all have in common they all have balloons attached to them. They all have mm. giant balloons everywhere. These satellites are coming down. They all have balloons. Yeah, I've thought about that when you, you were mentioning there about them being obviously they're in orbit and talk about like who's going to service them. And it's just, excuse me. So let, let's talk about them being in orbit. We just say, you know, we're, we're just convinced that an orbit is a, is a real thing, right? So this is, this is what they teach us in school, this first model, right? The sun's here, stationary, yeah. and we're going around. But that's not really what it is. The sun's moving at a half a million miles per hour. We're orbiting at 66,000 miles an hour. We're spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, right? So, so we're spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. So you got a satellite. How far out are they? 2,200 miles, 2,000 miles out, whatever they are. How is that satellite going to stay over the same piece of land mm. as the Earth is spinning, as it's orbiting 66,000 miles an hour, chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour, right? All of these motions are, are going on, and, and you don't feel them or sense them. Let me just put that into into context this is the hypersonic sled track i think it's run by nasa did you see that if you look it up on youtube with sound it's shocking it just goes by the shock wave is incredible it's going by at mach 6.8 right 6.8 times the speed of sound can't even see it okay watching it you can hardly fathom that speed but could you fathom twice that speed no sure. right no that's you have to believe that we live on a lumpy rock Surrounded by curved water, 71% of it's covered by water. Surrounded by air adjacent to a void. All of these things are impossible. Traveling around the sun 10 times faster than this and chasing the sun 100 times faster than that. All of them in curved trajectories. So you can't say, well, on an airplane, I could drink a glass of water and I can go to the bathroom. You want to compare the airplane to the slowest speed, which is the spin of the Earth. You have to double the speed of the airplane. You have to remove the outer shell of the airplane and you have to nosedive at a mile per minute to follow the curve. Let me know how your drink's going and don't even bother going to the bathroom because you already went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember when we used to, we have uh, Sky Television over here, and um, it used to be it used to be a satellite dish. It's now not. It's streaming TV now called Sky Glass. But I remember when yeah. the engineer used to come out, and they used to say that there was like um, lining up the satellite dish with the satellite. And I used to and I and when you mentioned there, and I thought, how are they lining it up if we're spinning around? Like yeah, no, how are I, they I, lining I, I, this little dish on the side of your house? I have some I have something to tell you about that. But first. This is NASA. This is what the Rockefeller textbooks teach us. This is what they want us to believe, this insanity in that corkscrewing spiral universe. But what doesn't lie? Men lie. NASA lies. Everyone lies. Nature doesn't lie. Right? This is what they want you to believe. But this is what we observe. This is what we observe. Right? Mm -hmm. the, which one, you know, what does this tell you? Let your, let your God-given common sense tell you. This is moving, twirling, and whirling at speed you can't comprehend, or is it perfectly stationary, just like the Bible says? Absolutely stationary. Right. Look at this. No convexity mm -hmm. to that water, right? Water convex. Well, the Earth is so big, David, you can't see the curvature, but boats go over the horizon. You know that 
on a globe 24,901 miles around. All of you globe believers didn't even know that. That's the, that's the circumference of your world. That at just three miles, there's six, foot of, six feet of curvature. So if you are standing at the edge of perfectly calm water, perfectly calm, at three miles out, you couldn't see the surface of the water anymore because it's dropping below a physical curve. But we all, with our naked eyes, let alone our optics of today, um, you know, our telephoto optics, have seen way farther than that. And if there's any waves on here at all, forget it. It'll, it'll make your horizon closer. And if you sat down, the horizon's only a mile and a half away, not even. Okay? Mm. But I could sit down and look across seven or eight miles of water and see people sitting on a beach. Yeah. So they want you to believe that the Earth is so big you can't see curvature, but they want you to believe that boats go over the horizon. And then when you look at the actual math of where the physical horizon would be, that a globe Earth requires a globe Earth requires a physical curve. This is a physical curve. You cannot see my mouth because it's behind a physical curve. If you zoomed in, you still couldn't see my mouth because there's a physical curve. But the thing is, hmm. we can zoom in on things and see them way beyond way beyond where, um, where, they, where, we, where we should be able to see them. For example, let me show you. So this is, here we go. So just so you understand, the horizontal eye zone is where the sky and the ground meet. Now, are my hands really touching if this was perspective? No, they're still this far apart, but in the distance, everything compresses into your horizontal horizontal eye zone. So out here, you don't see any boat, but we're zooming in. So as we zoom in, we're increasing the angular size. And as we increase the angular size, we're like, oh, look, there is a boat right there. Now, am I zooming mm -hmm. over a curve? No. Now, look, you see the bottom of the boat. Now, my finger can't hide the bottom of that boat. If my finger was a wave in the foreground, it could hide the entire boat. And you would think that that's eye level, but I'm hiding, the boat's gone. So there's your boat over the horizon, zooming it in. But Dave, you can't zoom the sun back in. Totally different thing. We'll get into that in a little bit, right? So that's, um, that's that. Let me show you something else too while we're on this topic. I mean, I do this myself because I live, like my front room's facing... I mean, I live about just over a mile and a half from a beach, but I can see it from my living room. I can see all the water and they have um, wind farms out at sea, which are, I mean, I'm about a mile and a half from the beach and these wind farms are probably three to four miles out and I, I can see them. And if I get my binoculars out, do you know what I mean? I can. You can, but it looks, like the bottom, over a, the, it looks like the bottoms are underneath the, underneath yeah. um, the, the ocean. There's a perfect uh, explanation for that. So let me show you something. So this is looking out the water. So you can't see the beach is just right before here. I'm standing at the edge of the beach. And all of this glossy part of the water would just say, you know, out to here, right? Out to there. This, how long would you say this, this span is? From here right to just before the horizon where the water gets dark. I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It's about 50 yards. Let's call it 100 mm -hmm. yards, right? 100 yards, 100 meters, maybe 200 meters. Okay, call it a quarter mile. I don't care. Okay. And then there could be a boat out here that's five miles away. So mm -hmm. the first quarter of a mile, call, you know, you, you do kilometers over there, right? The first kilometer. No, we do. I do, do miles. miles. All right, great. We do miles. First quarter of a mile. <laughs> Europeans, up, they do kilometers. Takes up 95% <laughs> of my field. So look, from here to here, Let's say that's 100 yards, right? Mm. From there to there, that's another 100 yards. From there to there, it's another 100 yards. You can't even see. That's another 100 yards. It's another 100 yards. It's another 100 yards. And, and they're all getting compressed into that horizontal eye zone, just like the Bible says, all right? So looking at an orthographic view, right? So if I'm over here where I'm standing, I'm looking at this boat, right? Here's a half a mile, whatever it is. Let's, let's call this one mile, right? The boat from my point of view is going to get smaller. And then from, from the side point of view, nobody sees orthographically like we're looking at it. 
that's another mile, right? And that's another mile, and that's another mile, and that's another mile, and that's another mile. And between this yellow line and the edge of the paper, you could probably fit 15 more miles in there because it's all compressed. So that boat is going to disappear. And if there is a three-foot wave right here, that boat's going to just shrink and not appear to get any farther because every time you move it a mile farther, it's not any farther in your visual range because your visual range has already compressed it into that little tiny line. So this little tiny segment from the from this yellow line to the edge of the paper, the edge of the screen here, um, that is the same as 10 of these, but it's all right there. So, hmm. so the, the water does that. You have all of these segments. Each one of them is the same, but it's all compressed in there. And the sky does the same thing. So this segment is the same as that, is the same as that, is the same as that, is the same as that. And it all compresses. Now, if I zoomed in, oh, all of those would open up. They would all open mm -hmm. up. Okay. So, so here I got a six foot guy and a three foot block, right? And he's standing right next to it. He can look over. He can see. What? There are the balloons again. I, gotta, I, gotta, I don't know how to turn that off. Right? I did, ready? I'm going to make a, a symbol. Everyone's going to go use a shell. I go like this, and I think it does lasers. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody tell me how to turn that off. I don't even know what's doing it. Zoom or OBS. I don't know. All right. So, so, three, so, so look at the distance. So if this is three feet tall, that's about three feet across the bottom, right? Three feet. You can see the – so the water – for the three feet beyond this block is blocked from his vision, but anything beyond three feet, anything beyond three feet is, is there, right? Mm -hmm. Is visible. So he can see all of the water out here, right? <laughs> this is very discern, very um, asserting. All right, so now I slide that block out and you see how much bigger this area got? It gets much bigger. And so I can't see the water until all the way out here. Why do I look like I have double hands? Hold on a second. Um, I don't know how to. All right, I'm doubled for some reason, but I have to figure that out. What is going on here? Oh, um, well, there's one. Okay, we'll, we'll just go with that. See if that works. Um, so... So that gets, what the hell is going on? All right, so now I'm behind it. Hold on. Sorry about that. Um, I'm just going to have to deal with it. All right, so I can see that. So I move it out a little farther, and you see what's happening here? This line is becoming, so now I'm making it, I made it much smaller. So I keep moving that block out. I keep moving that block out. Now that block is still only three feet. I move it out farther. I move it out farther, right? So the amount of space before that line is going to touch the water is massive. But in my visual space, it's not going any farther because it's all already compressed into that line. So this three-foot wave can drop block a cruise ship. You get it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. I got to see what's going on what here. What about... So what about Polaris? Because that's important, isn't it, for Flat Earth, I yes. believe. Tell so, us about it. Yeah, so all of the stars in the sky appear to circle around Polaris. And they tell us that's because we're spinning and Polaris just happens to line up with our, with our, um, with our, with our axis of rotation, right? You with me? Yeah. So have you ever heard of the Georgia Guidestones here in America? I have, yeah. Yeah, so the Georgia Guidestones, besides the whole story of, you know, what they were meant for, there was a hole in the very center stone, a very thin hole, and you look through it, any day of the year, mm -hmm. Polaris is right there. So you got to remember, we're, we're corkscrewing through space, whirling and twirling, traveling four and a half billion miles a year, never to return to where we were before, on curved trajectories, all of the stars in the skies are moving in their own directory and trajectories, but we don't see any parallax. We've never seen two stars change positions because a closer one, you know, closer, closer things move faster. We've never seen that happen. 
Never once with all of this going on. And so the heliocentric explanation is, well, they're so far away that all of that motion is meaningless. So far away that four and a half billion miles a year for hundreds of thousands and millions of years doesn't change anything. Oh, well, we used to have a different North Star. 2,000 years ago, we had Thuban, right? And the, the pyramids in, in, uh, that, that have the shaft in, uh, in, in, uh, in Giza, they used to point towards Thuban, and now they point towards Polaris. And you just don't notice that we're moving because we're moving so slow, and it has to do with the wobble of the Earth. The wobble of the Earth mm. will change where it's pointing. So, okay. So the great year is 26,000 years. One degree per year is, it, one degree is 76 years, right? So the sun, so the, 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 the pole is shifting one degree every 76 years. So let's wait 76 years and see if it shifts. By then, we're kind of going to get distracted, I bet, and be thinking about something else. However, the Georgia Guidestones, um, they were lined up with Polaris, and they were up for over 40 years, and Polaris never moved. Now, one degree in the sky is three moon winds. If you lined up three full moons, that's one degree. So in 40 years, that's more than a half a degree. Polaris would have been far out of that hole, but it was still there. And we started making videos about it, and they started going viral. And then did you hear what happened? Out of nowhere, oh, they, a terrorist yeah, yeah. blew up the Georgia Guidestones. Three hours later, yeah. bulldozers were there, took all the evidence away, and no investigation was ever done. Mm. Isn't that suspect? Oh, definitely, yeah. So there's. I mean, I I I seen that on TikTok. That uh, that yeah. that's where I first sort of seen some um, flat Earth stuff because I'm not. Before I sort of looked into it, I wasn't going to sit there and watch a two hour video, but I watched like you know videos that were like a couple of minutes, and that was one of them that I seen regarding Polaris how there it was lined up with the Georgia Guidestones, and like you said, it's not moved. They can claim anything they want about the, you know, the the shaft and the pyramid used to point towards a different star. How are you going to prove them wrong? You weren't there. Georgia Guidestones prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt, but now they're gone. And now mm -hmm. people are just going to be, it's going to be memory hold, right? Yeah. You have to, you have to wonder. Now, are you, uh, you're in England, you said? Well, no, I'm, I'm from England. I actually now live in Wales, so I'm you're about... Not far from English border, though. Wait, is that like anywhere? I, li I live on the coast. You ever go to Stonehenge? I'm actually going this year. I'm going next month because on my way to Southampton this year, I am yeah. going past Salisbury, so I'm going there. So the story of Stonehenge is complete and total nonsense. It was built in the 1950s. I'm going to jump forward here. This is the yeah, this is it. video of the construction of the Georgia Guidestones in the 1950s. Not the Georgia, the Georgia I mean the Stonehenge. Sorry. Stonehenge. Yeah, yeah. Let's jump forward. This is them building it. Now there was some old pyramid there, but they took all not pyramid sculpture there or, or monument. They took the stones off site, planned this whole thing. I don't even know if they're the same stones, and the whole thing was built in the 1950s. So. What do we, what do we, what does that mean? It means they're lying to you. It means they're lying to you and you can never, ever trust them. Mm. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. That, 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 that's one of the thrusts of this podcast is that, you know, basically everything we've been told is a lie. And what I always say on here is as a Christian, what you've got to understand is, and, and, and anyone needs to understand this. Jesus himself told us that the devil is the God of this world with a small G temporarily, but he says that he's the God of this world and he's the father of lies. And when he speaks a lie, he speaks his natural language because there's no truth in him. So isn't surprising that everything in this world that he's running temporarily at this moment in time is a lie. So people shouldn't be shocked if, if things like this are a lie and everything, yeah. the history has all been falsified. Yeah, a hundred percent. So for those of you that haven't tuned out yet and have an open mind and are curious what's going on, God bless you. Thank you for being here. Um, I offer three Bitcoins for one globe proof. That just helps motivate a lot of people because of, you know, everything runs on money. Um, I'm offering three Bitcoins for one proof of the globe. If you think I'm crazy, 
If you think he's nuts for having me on and are ready to unsubscribe, why don't you collect the three Bitcoins? It's very easy. One globe proof. The problem is, if you Google my name, Flat Earth, if you Google my name, you're going to end up at Professor Dave's video. And luckily, you have a sharp enough mind that say, wow, this guy, first, he's not a professor. He's a failed musician that calls himself a professor. But um, something's wrong with that. And it, it struck your curiosity. I talk about that a lot where, where um, Google pushes that video when you search Flat Earth, even without my name, um, it, come, it comes up as like one of the top hits because they think that that destroyed Flat Earth. It actually is waking up more people than most videos because people are watching mm -hmm. you go like, why did he act that way? Now you're talking to me. Now I'm going to show you some places to look, right? My website, flatearthdave.com, there's tons of free stuff on there. I have an app. The app is amazing, right? And, yeah. um, and every day, app. yeah, you have the app. Awesome. I've awesome. got it. Every day there's a new featured video. It's just so every morning while you're having your cup of tea, um, hit that video mm -hmm. and watch the video and watch the videos that come after it. There you go. Nice work. You have a, mm -hmm. a referral code. Let people use your referral code, get some points because you're going to earn crypto for that very, very soon. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll do that. I've just so, got it yesterday. Actually, started right. looking at it. So let me let me show you. Let me show well you. So if you hit the the handshake button, right? You don't have to do it right now, but check it out. Mm. Hit the handshake button. That opens up the friend finder, and um, that'll show you all of the people around you. Let me show you. Let's 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 look at the at, here. This is this is the UK right here. These are the people that have mm -hmm. my app, right? Pretty pretty crazy, but um. Mm -hmm. If you go, if you go over here to this button, your button will look a little different. Um, that's the referral area, and you're gonna have a random number right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, click the little pencil next to it. Um, oh no, no, it's not. Well, actually, that yours is gonna be over here. It's like this is just a new layout. Mm -hmm. Um, you click the little pencil and put in something that's easy for people to remember. You know, just whatever mm -hmm. you can put in. You know, anything up to seven characters. And then when anyone downloads the app which is $3, one-time charge. And there is a subscription, but that's $11 a year. You don't have to get it, but you're going to want it. It's for a few extra features. Um, you get a point every time someone downloads it, and then you earn points, which puts you on the leaderboard, does other things, but you're also going to earn cryptocurrency for, for it. And uh, we think that this crypto is better than Dogecoin, and it's called Dome. Dome, right? So... Yeah. You're going to learn about that um, very, very, very soon. Now, this this version you're seeing here is actually coming out hopefully this week. Um, so do that, and then uh, and uh, maybe when you do your recording at the beginning, tell people use your referral code. All right, yeah. be, earn okay. some points because you're going to earn Dome, and and I have a feeling that you know I'm not telling anyone to buy anything. I'm just saying earn some crypto. It it might do something for you. So. Mm -hmm. So uh, where where I was going with that? Just every day, watch the featured video. If you if I if you said, hey, send me a video on the fake moon landing or how the sun sets, I send you that video. The next video that's going to pop up is going to be a Google debunking video, a nonsense video that they want you to watch. But on the app, mm -hmm. we break the algorithm. We feed you all the videos that come after it. So and again, don't believe anything. Verify everything, just like the Bible says. Believe you know, mm -hmm. people lie. Verify it. We're just making it easier for you to um to find stuff. So yeah. there you go. I um I've had a couple I mean I've had a couple of guests on here previously who are flat surfers. No, we weren't talking about that. One briefly mentioned it. And <laughs> when you were talking then about saying that if people think I'm crazy for having you on, like don't unsubscribe. I was literally told off this one guy who I interviewed last year. He said, if you do an episode on Flat Earth, he said, you will lose subscribers. He said he knew a guy who literally had to start a separate podcast so we didn't lose subscribers. Yeah. But basically, and I've said it every week to my audience, this podcast is about finding the truth. Yeah. It's about finding the truth. Not not and 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 to say to people, listen, this stuff's being presented to you. You verify it. Everything. You think it's nonsense, fine. If you if it intrigues you, look into it further. If you're already a believer, great. But just verify it yourself. Use critical thinking skills and do your own research. I encourage people to do that all the time. 
it's it's like there was a, a group of people in the Bible they called them the Bereans, and it said that they search the scriptures daily to see if these things are so. So things that they were told, they went back to the scriptures and looked at them to see if they're so. Same when I go to church, if I hear some stuff from the pulpit and I've not heard it before, I'll have a look into it and see if it's if I can verify that what's being said is correct. Here, here's um, the. Thing. You're going to learn, you're going to hear a lot of people say a lot of things. You're going to see people in your comments going, oh, Dave's a grifter. He's just here to sell apps and this, that. Just say, where's your best glow proof? Or go look at their channel. It's empty. There's no content on it. Zero, right? So that's mm -hmm. all you're going to get. They'll never offer you proof because if they did, they'd win three Bitcoins, but they can't because the earth isn't flat. People are like, what about sun under clouds? Or what about this? I'm showing the app right here. Um, you just click the, the images icon, which is right Right. Whoa, why isn't that showing? Ah, oh, damn it. Um, I have to go this way. So you click the images icon, which is the color wheel right here. And then you could type in, uh, I just loaded this, so it's going to load for a second. Sun under, there we go. And here are all pictures debunking the sun under the clouds, showing, look, the sun's under the clouds, but the light is on top of the clouds. And so anything you want is, you can find the images, the memes, the the information. You know, like um, there was a a a a, 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 a long distance photography. So we say um, we can see too far. I'll say see too far. Right, and there it is. And up come these images. And here here's one. These mountains in the distance here. Let me zoom in. These mountains that we can clearly see. They're all in the high res photo. Uh, are over 700 miles away, close to 700 miles away. There's 50 miles of missing curvature. Remember the ball in front of my face? You know what Glovers say about this? Nothing. They won't even address it because they have to, the only thing they can say is, well, they're refracting up and they're stopping at eye level just to trick you to think the earth is flat. And, and all the distances in between you are refracting up different levels and they all line up perfectly on a flat plane. 50 miles of missing curvature, 50 miles of missing curvature. And they're right there. And you can zoom in and you can see them. You can see them. You can go verify that those are them and, and where it is. And so the, people say, you know, Globers will say, I haven't seen, you know, guys that have been at this for a long time. I haven't seen a single flat earth proof. Hello. Hello. Where have you been looking? Where have you been looking? Right there. Right? There's zero globe proofs. Every test in history for axial rotation or curvature has shown the opposite. Right? Scientists say, well, you can't prove that the stars and the lights in the sky are moving around us or we're moving, you know, that the sun is moving or we're moving around the sun. You can't tell, but they teach you in school that it's a fact that we're going around the sun. When your common sense tells us the sun's going around us, easy over the earth, over. The sky is a perfect clock, right? Wherever the sun is, it's noon, right? The sun's on its way to that inner yellow line, which is the Tropic of Cancer. Therefore, we're having our summer because we're in the inner north. The sun is closer to us. Mm -hmm. When the sun moves out to the Tropic of Capricorn, let me move it out. Um, where's my out? There it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. So when the sun moves out to the Tropic of Capricorn, it's summer in Australia. It's summer in South Africa, and it's cold for us. Why? Sun's farther away. It looks lower in the sky. Its heat is farther away. We're cold. Mm. Yeah. There you go. There's a lot to think about, and it's good stuff, Dave. You, I mean, yeah. what I will say is for people who are sort of thinking, well, what is this? Dave has researched this, and that's what I always say. I always get guests on who do research. You know, you've spent, you said probably what, eight years Ten doing years. this? Ten. Ten years. 2014. One thing that I did definitely want to talk to you about um, before we wrap this up is Antarctica. And the Admiral Byrd sort of, he, well, he went there, didn't he? I mean, what do you think the Guardian is account? Because obviously, I mean, I've heard an account of that he was basically uh, guided in some into some sort of base there and spoke to 
like who knows who it were, but like almost like alien type beings, which I don't believe in aliens from other planets. But what I mean, what do you think regarding that story? You know, I know I know what you're talking about. Um, I wasn't there, so I can't verify it. But um, you know, no. we have uh, whistleblowers from the military that were stationed in Antarctica that said that there's cities of thousands of millions of people in Antarctica. What? Mm. Right. So, you know, what people don't understand is flat earth is, uh, is not, you know, we're not in a prison. I believe that there's more land beyond the shoreline of Antarctica. Antarctica is the shoreline. What's out here. What's out there. Right. What's out beyond the shoreline. Large bodies of water need containment, okay? Large bodies of water mm. need to be contained. Antarctica is the highest land on Earth. Antarctica, mm. if you look at the average heights of all of the continents, Antarctica, right? A pond, the shoreline is higher than the pond. It holds the waters in. The shoreline of our world pond is Antarctica. Right. Hmm. So let's say there was a lake a um, hundred miles around in the center of the UK. And the rest of the UK is Antarctica. Hmm. And we live in that pond, but we're not allowed to go to the shoreline of that pond. It's off limits. There's no independent exploration south. Right. Well, people are, well, you think it's an ice wall? No, it's the shoreline. It's the, it's the, it's higher, high continent. Here's the edge. This is what they want you to think the edge is. Right. Yeah. So, as I said, it's the edge of a lake. Here's Antarctica. This is like two, 300 feet high. This is the edge of a lake. Right. People say, you know, well, there, there's no, there's no, there's no video, you know, they're going to fall off the earth. Well, this is what they want you to believe. This is reality. Mm. Right. This is, this is Antarctica. This is the shoreline. Now, there's probably areas that aren't, um, that, that don't have you know, a wall that are more like this, but they're still <laughs> raising up. You know, they're, there might be a little bit of a tide. Who knows? Right. But I haven't seen that. <laughs> um, and then, you know, there's also video. People are like, well, you know, pictures could be manipulated. You know, here's video. This is Antarctica. This is Antarctica. Right. How come we don't get to see more of this? Yeah, I've seen that video, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, people say, well, well, what about satellite images? There's not a single photo of Antarctica from altitude. These are all cartoons. I'm not saying they're cartoons. Look at them. They're cartoons. Right? So. Well, if that's the thing regarding the Earth, isn't it? I mean, I've said to people, you know, one of the things I say to them is, you've never seen the Earth. You haven't ever seen it. What you've seen is this 12 strips of data that's been together in photoshop right this is admiral Byrd's ticker tape parade he went down there project high jump high land high jump he said he went out he found land beyond the south pole bigger than the united states that no human has ever set eyes upon filled with resources now in a time where the world is fighting over resources all wars are fought over resources and power and money right he found land filled with coal and uranium and gold and everything and uh no human has ever seen upon it set set eyes upon it they throw him a huge ticker tape parade, and um, and then he uh, he dies six months later in bed, has a heart attack. Okay, weird, weird, you know, died suddenly. Okay, that's the thing, right? He 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 was on the trend before it happened, right? And um, when 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 you start looking at at the stories at what goes there, you know, he was on the on the news when he talked about it. What's this? This is a flat earth map behind him and it's a clock. The sky is a perfect clock. You know how they fooled us? The sky goes around. You got 24 time zones and the sky goes around wherever the sun is. It's noon. I was just showing you on my, on the app. They said, you know, well, let's give the, let's give the peasants clocks, but we'll make the hour hand go around twice. So they never figure out where they are. The hour hand should only go around once a day. Mm. The hour hand is the sun. Wherever the sun, the UN is. maps a flat Earth map as well, isn't it? The UN, the UN map, the UN, their, their symbol, right? Uh, well, all of the, all of the the major uh, organizations that run the world, they all use, they all use that, 
they all they all use that same um, same same uh, same logo. These are some uh, fishermen that went beyond sixty degrees south, and I'll just jump forward here uh, quickly. A destroyer comes up upon them, radios them, and says, "Turn around, get out of here. You're not allowed here." Now they're a thousand miles from Antarctica. Nope, no one's allowed to go on escort un, uh, un, un ex, ex, I can't say the word escorted. Um, yeah. Beyond beyond uh, that area, and there's there's eight or there's seven or eight um, military bases all around the outer world that are in charge of keep making sure nobody goes out there. You know, Globers will say, "Oh, you know, that's on your flat Earth. It's so big. How how are they going to stop you from going there?" They got eight military bases. They got radar. They got buoys. Right? They got they got GPS buoys out there um, that you know anybody. It, it detects waves and and the, the entire thing is you can't get through it. You can't get through it. And people that are doing contractors that are, bring, you know, bringing stuff down there, doing work down there. They say when they cross that 60 degrees South, they're boarded by a military and the military takes over their helm. They're not even allowed to drive their own ships in there. Right. And they're, you're only allowed to go where you're only allowed to go. So see that rings alarm bells for me that that in itself the fact that they won't let you go tells you straight away that they're hiding something i mean why other otherwise you could like you said explore unaccompanied but you're not allowed right so this is google earth um the web version and you can draw a line around any area and get the square miles it tells you how big it is and everything and interesting wow that's very very handy let's draw a one around antarctica and when we draw it around antarctica watch what happens okay it does this weird this weird it flip it's because they pulled the whole thing around right it won't measure it right but if we if we go um to let's go where we go now we'll go to um the north pole so I'll draw an area around the North Pole, and it does the same thing. Weird, right? People say, well, you, know, you have to be over land or, you know, whatever, Let, well, too far north. We'll try it over Greenland, the like Greenland, um, and it measures it perfectly. You can do it anywhere you want except the North Pole and the South Pole. The two places that you can't go virtually or physically, um, it's kind of weird, right? Kind mm -hmm. of weird. Let me, let me show you this. We got a couple of minutes. We'll go, just go a little long. Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, an encyclopedia that was um, found. I think it's uh, 1954 and 55. And in here, it says uh, they, they did a trip and it took 22 days, 22 days. So when you go visit Antarctica, you literally go out here to a little island called, ready? Rothschild Island or Deception Island. That's where you get to go visit, <laughs> right? You're not even anywhere near, right? So this is 2,000 miles. So here are the bases that they have in Antarctica. These are, they're just near the shoreline of Antarctica, right? So, so the airplane went from one stop two stops, three stops, four stops, 22 days. That makes more sense. Antarctica is only like 10, 12,000 miles around. If it's a continent, this is more like 60, 70,000 miles, right? So, whoops. Did I get the end of it? So, okay. So, and it said the expedition made extensive flights covering all of the Antarctic coasts. Why the coasts? Why don't they ever cross the South Pole, the center? Right? This is what they did. They took our map and they wrapped it around a sphere. And they say that we took the sphere and flattened it out to make a map when this is what they did. And you're not allowed to go explore here. You can go to the edge, which is really the edge of our pond, but there's no photos of this from outer space. Mm. Yeah. Right. Antarctica is one of them. It's so fascinating. Yeah. So fascinating. So it's so, a massive rabbit hole. Yeah. So this is a, um, a trip that they were going to go across the North, the South pole. So they went from, you know, deception Island over to here. 
Then they went over to the base they called Little America over here. Then they went to the South Pole, um, which they tell us is right there. And then they went back. Hmm. Right? So let me just. Okay. So where is my thing? Is it? Yes. All right. So let's take a look at what that really looks like. Um, so here they went from there to there to there to the South Pole and back. But if we if we look at that, did, is that going across Antarctica? If I look at it on this map, right, way zoomed out. Now that again, this is you know we're guessing they just did this. They went from here to here to here and back. The trick is to go from here south and show up over here in Australia. That would be a ball. That would be crossing yeah. the, the, that would be crossing. So they just, and now look, this is South America. South America is huge. It's way bigger than the United States. Look at this. This is huge. This, how do you know? You don't know where you are down here. If you're a mile inland, you can't see the water. You can't see anything. You're in a white barren land, you know, if it is all frozen like that, um, which I think a lot of it is. And so they went from here to here. This is a massive adventure, but you didn't cross the bottom of the world. You just went here. Mm. That's all you did. Right? Yeah. This is uh, another, this is, I mean, it's, this is another, this woman that went, she went from here to here to here. And they're like, oh, she went across Antarctica. No, she didn't. <laughs> she didn't. She went here. She went there to there to mm. there. Now, this is big. This is, you know, I don't know. This is half of South America or whatever. That's big. That's huge. It could take, it'd take you a long time to do that. So you think then, basically, the Earth's massive, much bigger than what we realize or what we've been told, because, like you're saying, uh, we're just basically in a pond, and there's much more land. That's what you, that's what you believe. Again, we don't need to speculate what's beyond the shoreline of Antarctica to absolutely prove that the Earth is a level topographical non-rotating mm. plane. We don't need to do that, but I love doing that, all right? There's a lot of evidence, a lot of evidence, right? All of these domes, all of them, I call them domes because that's what they call them, dome A, dome B, C, D, E, F, right? Those are really on the outside. So you get to the shoreline and you go south, which is away from the center of the Earth, and there's mountains. Uh, those mountains might connect to the dome. Those might be what holds up the dome. Those might be part of the dome. Off limits. It's all off limits to us. Did you ever mm -hmm. see my uh, my thing on Karabati? Karabat? No. Karabas? All right. I'm going to show you that, and then, we're, then we'll wrap it up. Because I can go forever, by the way. Just forever. All right? <laughs> So this is the last one. And, uh, and, this, and the reason I want to bring this up is because you talked about extraterrestrials. Uh, you don't believe they come from other planets. And I'm with you. I believe in extraterrestrials. Um, and by the way, a UFO is an unidentified, unidentified flying craft. So if I flew yeah. my drone over your house and you didn't know what it was, it's technically a UFO. So, mm -hmm. but the question is, are they alien UFOs? What are they, right? Extra terra, extra land, more land, extra, more extra territory, extraterrestrials come from the extra terra beyond Antarctica, from the outer space, beyond the shoreline of Antarctica, extraterrestrials from outer space here on Earth. Mm. Okay, so here's a ship tracking website. I'm going to go through this fast. Um, and we found a ship 730 miles inside of the shoreline of Antarctica. That's uh, that's uh, 1.9 miles higher than sea level. How does a ship get there? We found another one that was 905 miles in. That's over two miles higher than sea level, and it's inland, right? It's it's in 905 miles inland. How did it get there? So when you click on these ships, you um, you you uh, they'll tell you. They'll tell you um, all about the ship, you know, where it's going, who the captain is, where it's registered, size of the ship, what they're carrying. It, it, it says lots of stuff. We clicked on the ship and it said, all it said is that it was 850 meters long, which is gigantic, and 80 meters wide. And it's registered to the nation of Kiribati. 
and it's Karabas, but I'm going to call it Karabati because that's how it's spelled. And all the people in, F in Fiji can be mad at me. It's fine. Okay. So, oh, I wasn't showing you. I didn't show you. I, did you not see what I was showing you? You didn't. Let me show you. So here, here is, um, okay. Here is, here's the ship 905 miles inland, right? Sorry about that. It's 905 miles inland. And, um, like how, how is that possible? So we, we looked and we said, okay, wh where's it from? It's from Karabati Kara and Karabas, right? Right. Mm. And so where is that? And you go on Google earth and it shows you it's a little tiny atoll. I put a pin on it cause you can't even see it until you get really close to it in the middle of the ocean and uh, America, China, Vietnam, all these countries are saying it's a very, very important trade route. Very, very important trade route. Why does, why do we need to stop at a sandbar? Okay, what's going on here, right? Mm. Karabati, K-A-R-I-B-I-B-I-T-I. -I -I. Remember that, that's important, Karabati, right? This is an old video, an old screen capture because they changed it already because just like I told you, they changed things before. So what are they doing there? And on Karabati, there's a bed and breakfast, uh, Captain Cook bed and breakfast. Well, that's, mm. uh, Captain Cook's the guy that tried to circumnavigate Antarctica and it took him three and a half years, he went over, 60, 70,000 miles. Sounds like a flat earth, but weird. Maybe just somebody loves Captain Cook there. Um, and if you look at all of the ships that are docking at the massive pier on the sandbar, um, they all say their destination is Christmas Island or unknown. And if you looked into Christmas and Santa and Satan and all of that stuff and child trafficking really throws up some red flags, really throws up some red flags. Okay. So what's going on here? Um, they said there was a lot of nuke testing there. And if you looked into the nuke hoax, that's another, another strike. And then if you look at time zones, right? Time zones are where you draw a straight line on the globe from the North pole to the South pole, and you draw 24 of them, right? And like, like sections in an orange. And uh, those are your time zones. And as the earth spins, you know, wherever the sun is, it's noon makes sense. Right. Right, so there should be 24 straight lines, but there's this weird line right here. Weird line. Weird line, what is going on there? So let's take a zoom at that. And this line crosses over three and a half date lines, okay? And Karabati is right there. I would call that the most suspicious spot of all. I don't know what it means, but that's another strike for, uh, for what's going on here, right? And then if you Google, Karabati now, right? It brings you to this island. What, what, what's going on there? Like it, that just changed. And Karabati is all the way over here mm. and they changed the name. It's now Karamati. What happened? I don't know if you can see that there. It's now yeah, Karamati. And it was, they changed it. Again, that tells us something suspicious, suspicious. Um, another thing is the globe time zones make perfect sense. Did you know that there's 19 time zones in the North, 24 between the tropics and 32 in the South? No, no. they don't teach you that in school. <laughs> they say it's for political reasons. No, it's because when you wrap them around a globe, you lose time zones in the South. Right. So mm. it's all to keep you confused. Right. It's all to keep you keep you confused. Now, people say um, when you live on a ball, any place that's beyond the limits of the ball is assumed to be another dimension or folding of space time. They came they came through space time. Coolest thing ever or, or whatever. Right. When when in reality, um, it could be it could be much, much simpler. So. Here's a map that was found, published in a Hawaiian newspaper in 1910, shows all of these continents out here. Okay. Hmm. Now let's look here. Here's South America. Let's say they took you on a boat to Antarctica and you went right here, right to the middle of this landmass. Now look at the little middle, this landmass. This landmass is bigger than Canada, UK, and Mexico combined. It's gigantic. So if they pulled you up there and said, you're at Antarctica, what are you going to say? No, I'm not. How are you going to, like, this is massive. Yeah, I don't know. You're not yeah. going to know where the hell you are. No. What if 
Kiribati, this is a trade route. Out here are other civilizations, advanced civilizations, mm -hmm. right? Advanced civilizations here on Earth. Now, the closest star is 25 trillion miles away. That's what they tell us, right? 25 trillion miles. You and I get into a ship going a mile per second for 1 trillion seconds. We've gone 1 trillion miles, a mile per second. No one's ever gone that fast. 1 trillion seconds. You know how long that is? I've got a clue. Take a guess. I'll give you a Bitcoin if you guess it within a day. It's a bit longer than that. <laughs> well, yes, if you guess within one day, okay, within a one week. Tri one trillion seconds. One trillion seconds, yeah. Oh. Just take a wild guess. You're not going to get 10 years. Very, very close. 31,000 years. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 why did I tell you that? One trillion seconds is 31,000 years. That tells you how big a trillion is. Right. Yeah. We haven't the Earth hasn't been here for a trillion seconds, according to the mainstream. Right. Third, well, maybe, maybe no, it's been here for millions of years. Sorry. Um, 31,000 years. So we have to do that 24 more times to get to the closest star and find out, oh, gee, there's nothing on this planet. We have to go to another star, which is a hundred times farther than that one. Okay. Outer space is ridiculous. The outer space is not ridiculous. If I go here, whoops, I, I'm clicking on it. If I go here and I click and I type in map, let's see, maps, let's see what we got here. What if the world is set up like this? What if we live here in the center? That ring is Antarctica and out here are some outer lands. What if? I don't know. I don't know. But there's a lot of evidence pointing to other lands. And if you really want to expand it, this is, uh, this is uh, an interesting map. We live at the center here and these are other worlds just tens of thousands of miles away hundreds of thousands of miles a hundred thousand miles you know, you know it's just short nothing these are other worlds here on a flat earth now i don't know if this is true this is just something that we're speculating about and um whoops lost my connection there it's all right come on come back um well, it'll come back. Hopefully it'll come back. Um, there we go. So what if it's, what if, what if that's it? Listen, if you want to believe in extraterrestrials, flat earth is the way to go. Because think about this. If you live just beyond Antarctica on those lands, um, you could come here, abduct somebody, you know, do your anal probing or whatever you got to do and make it home in time to have dinner with the alien kids. Right. On the in the app, there's a books section, and if you scroll over to old to um, more land, there's a whole bunch of books in here that are awesome. Iron Republic, I highly recommend. The Navigator Across the Ice Wall, amazing. Read these books. Don't believe anything. Think. Right in the 1800s, late 1800s, there was a New York politician that just got sick and tired of tyranny. No, got sick and tired of politics and everything. Sold his house, had a bunch of money, bought a big ship, went to Antarctica, found some opening, went through, came out. They're out sea. The stars are different. They couldn't figure out where they were. They were lost at sea for a couple of months. And then finally they found a land and they saw a city and they pulled up. And in the morning, they waited until dawn. A boat came out and greeted them. They're like, hey, welcome. You're at the Iron Republic. They're like, where's that? He's like, well, it's on the other side of Antarctica, about the same distance as the United States. And um, he uh, ended up staying there for 10 years got married. I think his wife died and he finally got distraught and he, he got his ship back and he went back to Florida and told the story. Now, whether that's true or not, it rings true to me. In the 1800s, they were talking about more land, more civilizations beyond Antarctica, right? People, mm -hmm. we've known the earth is a globe for 2000 years. No, we haven't. Eratosthenes, not going to get into it, proves the earth is flat. If you ask me, I could show you. Um, there's all, there's all sorts of stuff, but I interviewed a woman named Ruth in uh, 2020, 102 years old, and she was taught flat earth here in school in America, public school. We found uh, people that in the 1950s that said that they were taught flat earth and globe earth in school because they didn't know. So this whole thing about we've known for 2000 years is nonsense. Eratosthenes, even if that experiment was done, does not prove the globe. It, it works perfectly the same way on a flat earth. Um, if you want to learn more about that on the app, 
the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. You can find it at flatearthdave.com. You hit the question mark button, and here are all the questions you're going to ask. And one of them is uh, sticks and shadows right there. All of the videos breaking that down. You know, why the lie? That's the best one. Uh, let's let's mm. finish with that. Why the lie? Basically, they're hiding God. They're hiding your true divinity. They're hiding more resources. They're hiding your true power. They're hiding the fact that government, govern, control, meant is the mind, is nonsense. It's just a belief system, right? They're hiding the fact that you, that we are here, inheritors of this world by God, living in natural law, and they're making up a whole bunch of other laws. And they can't have it where we believe in a creator because they would have to make laws that abided by natural law, the God's, God's law. But if they have us living in their fake satanic ball world, if we're playing on their ball field, we have to abide by their rules. And once you unplug from that matrix and start seeing the real world and take your power back, well, what difference does it make, Dave? I still have to go to work on Monday. No, you don't, right? Things change. And uh, what difference does it make? I'm only one person. One person with the truth is a thousand times more powerful than a whole bunch of liars. And so here's the problem. People are like, you know, I'm pretty happy. I get two weeks off of work paid. And, um, you know, in the summer, they give me a half day on Friday. And, uh, you know, I'm going to work until I'm so old that I really can't enjoy my retirement because I'm still broke. You know, they, they want you just here living on their farm where they're literally siphoning off of our, our energy, right? And they, they're controlling our minds with the news and the nonsense. Um, but the reality is we live in an abundant world where there are no shortages. There is no overpopulation. I think there was trillions of people here living in all of the lands beyond Antarctica and here. And there's so much evidence um, of that. By the way, on the app, on the more resources page, which is the button that looks like a spider web, there's all sorts of, oh, I'm losing my connection here. There we go. There's all sorts of um, all sorts of other resources, but actually I'm at the homeschool page. Um, this top row here, there's a channel called My Lunch Break. You can find them on YouTube and all the other channels. Just start watching him. And uh, Jake, I'm the improbable dreamer. Show you the old world. It's right here in front of our faces. It's right in your town. You can see it yourself. But you've been blinded not to be able to see what's right in front of you. What is going on here? Um, so, so there you go. There's uh, tons of information there. Everything for me, if you want, if you're interested, uh, in booking me on a show or want to, you just want more information, flatearthdave.com. scroll down to the crash course. I challenge anybody to watch the first five videos in that and not end up being a flat earther. It's impossible. It's scientifically impossible. The only way they Brilliant. can you in your globe world is by making you not look at the evidence. Mm. no it's fascinating stuff dave you've given me a lot of things to think about and that's what i wanted john here for you know it's all about the truth the truth will set you free jesus yeah. said you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free so yeah guys flatearthdave.com um like i said we've talked about the app i've got the app i'm going to be looking into it well worth looking into don't just discount things guys um if you've never looked into it always look into something you can make your own mind up you might decide you believe in the globe even after it you may you know not be certain i'm not certain but i'm going to look into it it's been a uh, brilliant talking to you dave right, so man. um yeah it's been it's been excellent uh, especially that about antarctica i'm going to be probably sat up thinking about that now um and looking Just into that much here, further on the app if you hit the question mark that's your number one go-to and on the left-hand mm -hmm. side, it's Antarctica and the 24-hour sun. Lots of videos there. Spend a day or two just watching those videos. Hit that playlist. Uh, mirror it onto your TV. You, know, email, you, can, you can send yourself the playlist. You, know, you open up the playlist. Oops, there goes my thing again. Um, and, you, and you can just send it to your computer so you can watch it on a bigger screen. Um, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll... It'll keep you busy for a long time and it'll keep Google's algorithm of nonsense um, out. So again, yep. don't believe anything I say. Go verify everything. That's what I did. I didn't believe anything. I was like, oh, where, where are you getting your information from? YouTube? YouTube is a place that has everything. It's like life. It has a bunch of idiots in it and a bunch of smart people in it and a bunch of stuff. And you got to sort it out. It's just like life. 
So it's a platform yep. that's censoring the crap out of us. But guess what? All of the normies are there. All of the people that don't know of these other platforms. You know, you go outside and you ask a, no a person that has no idea about Flat Earth, uh, no idea about 9-11 or any of that stuff. You say, um, what's a, what, name, a, name three video platforms that post that you, can, that you can upload videos to. They'll go YouTube. That's all they know. Oh, and maybe TikTok now. They'll know TikTok too. Mm. Right. And, and, you know, maybe Instagram, but they don't know about Rumble or Odyssey or, or uh, Rockfin or, you know, lots of these places that are uncensored, but they want to keep you there. So YouTube has been a blessing for all of us, even with all the censorship and all of the nonsense and the shadow banning. Um, but it's waking up a lot of people. So it woke me up. Luckily yeah. for me, when no, I started looking into Flat Earth, YouTube would always recommend really good videos. Now they recommend garbage. You can't find anything. Mm -hmm. And all the stuff I showed you on the app, you won't find any of it on your own. No. Well, I'll be looking into it um, much more deeply, Dave. So thanks for your time. Um, I'll be back next week, guys, with a new guest. I'm Paul, and this is Beyond the Paradigm. Thanks. Yeah. Brilliant, Dave. Cheers. Thank you. All right, man. Thank you. Bye-bye.